And we acknowledge ourselves for showing up today. So yes, we are showing up in the house. I don't, I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, you look extra cute and juicy today. I don't know if it's just a Sunday or what, but so it's just, you, a great, huh? just great energy. You I'm telling you. So how many of you would like to experience your life in a more fulfilled, complete, happy, prosperous way than ever yes. before? I want to make sure we're all on the same page. All right, so, so in order to hear some new ideas about how to do that, I'm going to go through the guidelines of the course right quick, which is very simple, especially if you're here for the first time. Uh, you need not believe the ideas. How many of you are pretty good at that? Okay. <laughs> you need not accept the ideas. Got That's it? for sure. Okay. You need not even welcome the ideas. That's for darn sure. Everybody got that? Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas, what? You might actively, you might actively, actively resist. resist. You may feel a, some resistance. Okay. Um, you are not asked to judge or analyze the ideas at all. That's not what it's about. If we use the ideas, then we'll see that the ideas work and we'll see that the ideas are true. Whenever someone tells me that they have not experienced the peace that, that the Course in Miracles offers, uh, I immediately realize that they're thinking about using the ideas, but they haven't actually applied them yet. Sometimes there's a tendency with the Course in Miracles to think about applying the ideas and then <laughs> get upset because you actually didn't get the result of using the idea. Oh, yeah. Because they work. They actually work. Um, also, um, what you're looking for today is not so much to remember everything that I'm talking about, but you're looking for a message from your own higher self to you. And the message from your own higher self to you will be the one thing that I say that you go, wow, that's what I needed to hear. Wow, that's the thing. If I remember nothing else from what was said today, this was the thing I needed to hear today. If you just get that statement, you would have succeeded in what this course is about because I've been doing this a long time and I know that people go into Course in Miracles Amnesia. And what Course in Miracles Amnesia is is that you listen and you really feel like you heard exactly what I was saying while I was saying it and you will walk out that door and if someone says, what did you just, what did he just talk about today? You'll draw a total blank. You know, so when you want people to come to the class, you'll, you'll say something like, well, you just need to come. I, just, I can't even explain what he just said, but you just need to come. So I want you to keep in mind that we've been talking about, we're on page 17 in the teacher's manual if you have the books. I got a couple of extra loaner copies up here. Uh, the Course in Miracles uses Christian terminology to describe universal spiritual themes. And so the definitions that the Course in Miracles use for terms are different from the traditional meanings that we've learned. And everything in the Course is basically talking about love or Fear. fear. Right. So we only, according to the course, we only have two emotions, love or fear. Who can give me some different examples of love? Some other words we can use for love when we hear them. Joy. Joy. Peace. 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 Acceptance. Acceptance. Compassion. Compassion. Innocence. Innocence. Compassion. Truth. Truth. Compassion. Peace. Abundance. God. So when you're talking about I'm happy, I'm partying like a big dog, whenever I'm happy, whatever you're talking about, whenever you're talking about joy, you're in a state of love. And what about fear? What would be some other words that we would say other than I'm afraid? Anger. Anxiety. I'm angry, I have anxiety. Guilt. I feel guilty. Jealousy. I feel jealous. Attack. I feel attacked, attack, Disease. sickness, conflict. All of those are death. All of those are forms of fear. So when you hear the when you hear the terminology, so God would be another word for Love. Love. Ego would be another word for fear. fear. So if you have a problem with religious terminology, you can instantly translate the course by just taking the words and making it love or fear. Then you go past that. Um, so I'm gonna, we've been talking about how do you accomplish healing. Like if there's any situation, I want you to think, I want you to take a situation, to make this really practical, take one situation in your life right now that you know you were thinking about before you came over here that you know you would like to experience more peace in. And I'll give you a few seconds. Yeah, just don't give me one second. That's right, everybody got one? Yeah. Does everybody have one? Yes. Okay, because sometimes we, are, we think about the stuff that we'd like to see healed until someone says, think about the thing you would like to see healed. I got and it. And then when you say that, everybody kind of draws a blank and go, I, I, I don't know, I, 
Can't really think of anything that I'm that bothered about. Remember when you were throwing a brick at the person's car right before you got here? <laughs> Though that might be the person. You know, the one you avoid in King Super and you hope you don't see. That might be the situation. You know, if you feel like right now you don't have the prosperity you want in your life, that might be a situation. Anywhere where you're feeling a lack of peace is where the Course in Miracles says sickness is. Sickness is not just a physical illness. From a Course in Miracles perspective, sickness is a lack of peace. So wherever you have a lack of peace, that's where you're sick. Whatever you have a lack of peace about, that's where you're sick. So the court says that you don't have a healing until you understand why you're sick. And the healing happens as soon as you no longer see any value in the pain of the situation that you're going through. So if you're in a situation right now that's creating any form of fear for you right now, there's something that you're getting as a payoff out of that situation that's of making you keep it going. Like even if you say you'd like it to change, but you know that you're not really doing anything to change it, there's some payoff in that situation. And that's why you're keeping that situation going, even though you may be saying, I I'm tired of this, and I'm tired of this suffering. Wherever you're suffering, but you know you're not using the truth, there's some payoff you're getting out of that situation. So the courts then went on to tell us that the healing would happen to the exact proportion to which the valuelessness of the sickness is recognized. So the more I see that this isn't, va it isn't valuable for me to be broke, it isn't valuable for me to be suffering, it isn't valuable for me to be depressed, it isn't valuable for me to be angry, it isn't valuable. Now, the more I see it as being valueless, that's how much the healing will happen because the less value I put in it, the more I will allow the healing to happen. Everybody still along yeah. with me? Okay. So what can you say to yourself right now about the situation that you may be dealing with that you know you've been dealing with for a while now? Based on what I just said, and it's been a long-term situation, or a pattern is another way we like to call it, other than just calling the problem, we like to say, I have this pattern. So if you've got this pattern that you've noticed for a long time, if you were going to be honest with yourself right now, what would you say about that pattern? Getting something out of that. I'm getting something out of that pattern. That pattern has some kind of payoff. And because of the payoff that I'm getting in that pattern, that's why I'm keeping it going. That would be like the first part of the healing, is to say, I am not a victim of this situation that I'm in. Would you, those who don't mind, would you say that with me? I, I am, am not, not a victim, victim of the situation, situation that I'm in. in. I'm not a victim. victim. Yeah. I'm not a victim of I'm the world victim. I see. I'm not a victim of this person. <laughs> I'm not a victim of this situation. I'm not a victim of this circumstance. That's the first thing I need to remind myself of. And then the Course says that the existence of the whole world, as we see our world, depends on us believing that the world is creating what's happening to us, and we're not the ones who are creating our perception of the world. So I'll say it again. The world as we perceive the world is based on the idea that things are happening to us that we have absolutely no control of, did not create, and we have no control of, so we're constantly trying to deal with situations that are just coming to us in an unexpected way, situations that don't have anything to do with us. Do you know that when I first got involved with metaphysics and new thought, so-called new thought, new age, and I, new age is like a bad term now. You, people are scared to say new age back in the day. That was the first thing people said was new age. Now it's new thought, okay? It was new thought, <laughs> which is funny, which is nothing but old thought, remember? <laughs> you know, getting back to the truth of what's going on that we've forgotten about. Because people forget that their perception of everything is based on what they've learned. Yeah. So people really think they're looking at things directly. Like, like, you might think you're looking at me directly, but the truth is you're not looking at me directly. You really have your interpretation of me, and that's what you're looking at, and that's what you're responding to. You're looking at what you learned. You may have learned to look at me as a man. You may have learned to look at me as an African-American man. You may have learned to look at me as sitting in a chair. You may have learned to look at me as talking to a microphone. But if you had to learn to call me a woman, you'd be seeing me as a woman right now. If this color was called white instead of black, you would be calling me white right now. And you'd be black right now and you'd be feeling okay about that. You'd be saying, I'm a black person with blue eyes. You know what I'm saying? It, it, because if whatever you have learned, that's what you're looking at when you look up here at me. Okay, everybody with me on that? Yeah. You wouldn't be looking at me as a man if you had not been taught to look at me as a man. Does that, is that what everybody, I'm, I'm, it's, it's an important point I want to make with this. Are you getting me? That's what I'm yeah, asking yeah. for. The I reason why it. I'm asking for a response I is because it. questions hook the mind. Statements put you to sleep. So, so it's almost hard not to get conscious when someone asks you a question. But if I'm giving you statement after statement after statement, you can go totally unconscious. But if I say, do you think that you're as cute as you could be? Yes. 
you know. Would you like to experience your life greater than you've ever experienced your life before? Would you like to realize the difference between love and Would you like to have peace right now? Yes. Would you like to have a brand new wardrobe? Yes. You know, it's like when I ask you a question, notice that a question immediately hooks the mind even if you're trying to go unconscious. That's why you should talk in questions if you want people to listen to you. You go out on a date, ask some freaking questions. Don't be the one that's doing all the talking because you're putting the person to sleep. It's not about being uh, interesting. It's about being interested. <laughs> I'm interested in what you think. That's why I'm asking. I'm trying to learn not to judge. And so the way that you learn not to judge is to ask questions because if I ask questions, I'm not assuming I know everything there is to know about you. So I have a situation in my life that I'd like to see change. I need to understand it. I see some value in that situation, and that's why I'm not doing anything about it. When I see it as no longer being valuable for me to go through this change that I'm going through, then the healing will begin to happen. How will the healing, will begin, how will the healing begin to happen? It will happen through me receiving communication from the Holy Spirit, which is my higher self, and it will be coming to me through everything, everybody, and in every kind of way. You might happen to be looking at TV, and all of a sudden there's a statement made that you go, oh, that's what I need to hear right now because everyone's the Holy Spirit, everyone's the higher self, everyone is spirit, everyone is God. All of us are connected to spirit. So all of us could be a means for all of us receiving the answers that we need to receive. Yeah. So if you're ready to have a healing in a situation, then the course says the acceptance of the sickness or the unhappiness as a decision of your mind, the acceptance of the problem as a decision of my mind for a purpose that I want to use my body, that's the basis of healing. It says, when you decide to heal, you will heal. So first the decision to heal is made, and then all the solutions come to you after the decision to heal is made. We're taught to believe that the situation is going to show up and then we'll decide to be healed. It's actually the other way around. You decide to have love in your life, and then all the ways for you to have love in your life will start to show up. You decide to have prosperity in your perception, then all the ways for you to have wealth and prosperity show up. It starts with the decision. So are you willing to make a decision today that you're willing to have the love and happiness that you deserve in your life? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Then the situation that's causing you a lot of pain right now, tell yourself internally that there is no value and no gain at all to me in this. Okay, whatever that is, there's no gain at all to me in this problem. Now, what about the part of the mind that says, this problem is helping me become stronger. I'm gaining from this relationship that I'm going through right now. What do you think about that statement? I don't like it. Why don't you like that statement? <laughs> it's, a, it's a defense against the truth. It's a defense against the truth to tell yourself that. Because what will you do if you think you're suffering in a situation and you think it's for your own best interest, what will you do? Stay in You'll it. stay in it. As soon as you tell yourself, oh, I'm going through this, but this really is serving a useful purpose for me to go through this, then you're going to keep on staying in it because if it's useful, why wouldn't you keep on doing it? Mm -hmm. yeah. So why would a person, and when should a person, I'll put it this way, when should a person say to themselves, this is a lesson that God would have me learn. This is a great lesson that's helping me grow. This is a lesson that's bringing me to a point of joy and happiness and answers in my life. When should you tell yourself that? Right now. It's over. You should tell yourself that when it was over. You should tell yourself that after you put yourself in the situation that you didn't have to, have to go through in order to have the answer. In other words, I hate to tell you this, but you don't have to suffer to be happy. You don't have to suffer to be happy. You don't have to suffer to be happy. You can have gain without pain. 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 You can receive gifts. You can receive the gift of love, the gift of God, the gift of abundance, the gift of truth, the gift of right relationship. Because there's been many times in my life, haven't you experienced situations in your life where someone just gave you a gift and you didn't do